Hi and welcome to Essential Lightroom. In this video I'm going to show you how to recreate this dark and moody effect that I've got on screen. Now this kind of reminds me a little bit of the sort of the, some of the darker scenes in the Lord of the Rings and it really adds a nice moody atmosphere to this already cool looking image. So I'm going to take you step by step through how we process this. As always there's a free preset and the links available in the description below so you can grab that and follow along. Stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you how we can take some extra steps to ensure that you get the best image and end results based upon the photograph that you're working with yourself. So we're going to go above and beyond what we've got covered in the free preset. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video to ensure that you get maximum from this video tutorial. Okay, so before we start processing this image and I take you through all the different steps to get the end result we've looked at, I just want to say that we're now available on Patreon. So if you'd like to support the channel and everything we do, please pop along to Patreon and subscribe to that. The link is in the description below. And as a thank you, you'll get access to free exclusive content that won't be available anywhere else. That includes tutorials, tips and guides, future ebooks, as well as presets that are exclusive to Patreon. Anyway, without further ado, let's take a look at how we can start processing this image. So as always, we're in the develop module and I'm going to take you over to the basics panel to start off with and we're going to just tweak this image to get it where we want. So first thing I want to do is go through and add some contrast to the image. I don't want to go mad with this, but I want to sort of bump this up to probably about the mid 30s, somewhere on the kind of ballpark to get some nice definition in this sort of shadow area and like we've done in the past we're going to use the tone curve to kind of crush the blacks so this extra contrast really does help make those stand out and give some real character to your image. Next up I want to drag the highlights and pull those back because I want to make sure that when we start making the changes that we don't end up blowing out the skin tones on his face. So we're just going to grab the highlights and we're going to pull those down to about minus 20 somewhere around there so it gives us extra dynamic detail so we can make sure that we don't blow all those out. Next up we're going to go through to the whites and we're going to give those just a little bit of a boost to get again some more contrast in there. With this around 10 to 12 somewhere in that kind of region is as far as I want to go. Now I don't want to make this hyper sharp I want to actually get a sort of soft glow to it. So I'm going to grab the clarity slider and we're going to bring that down to about minus 20. That'll soften the skin out and give a kind of slightly dreamy look to it. So when we crush those blacks, it's really going to enhance the overall image. I want to grab the saturation and I want to desaturate the image generally. So we're going to drag that back to about minus 60 somewhere in that kind of ballpark so that kind of makes it almost black and white but because we got lots of warm tones in this such as the skin tones and the brown and reds we've got in the wood we're going to use the vibrance to sort of bump up those warmer tones about plus 25 somewhere on that kind of figure that's going to give us a little bit more warmth back in there and just to really accentuate that extra warmth we're going to grab the temperature and we're just going to give that a little bit of a boost up to the sort of yellows just to get a little bit more overall warmth in the overall image itself. So that's kind of where we are now. We've got that dreamy glow, we've desaturated it, brought some warmth back into the actual tones in the skin and in the woodwork. We're now ready to move on and jump over to the tone curve and start making our tonal adjustments to the image. Okay, we're into the tone curve now and we're going to go through and edit this. We're going to do this in two ways. We're going to adjust the overall RGB, which is the overall tonal information in the image itself and not the color information. But before we do that, we're going to tweak the red tones in the image. So to do this, we need to make sure that we are in the linear point curve mode. As always, just click the little symbol in the corner just to make sure you're in the right mode. Then next thing we need to do is just come to where it says channels and at the moment we've got RGB so we just expand that out and choose the red channel. That'll bring us up now so we can make tweaks to the red channel for the image. Now remember what I usually tend to do, add three points into this. Don't worry if they move a little bit which they inherently will when using a mouse. What we're going to do now is we're going to tweak those to either increase the amount of red or to pull in the opposing color which is green. So what we're going to do is keep this a really nice subtle alteration. So we're going to grab the sort of shadow information. We're going to drop that down to give it ever so slight green tint to it. So you take a look over on the right hand side where you've got most of the shadow information. It starts to get some real green tints into it. Now to kind of compensate for that, we're going to go to the highlight area and we're going to introduce a little bit of red into there. Like I say, this is all pretty subtle. We're not going too far with any of these, no crazy adjustments. So let's take a look at before. And take a look at after. 
So you can see that's now sort of introduced some nice color into this image. Now let's just jump back to the RGB channel. And now we're going to make some tonal adjustments to the image. So the first thing I'm going to do, as always, like I said, add a couple of extra points in there. So we've got all our major points in our image covered. First things first, let's grab those blacks and let's just crush those down a little bit. Probably want to go about that kind of point. Now that's looking a little bit too flat. So what we can do is to compensate for that. We can grab some of the shadows and we can pull those down a little bit just to reintroduce some of that contrast back into the image. We're going to grab the midtones and we're going to drag those down to kind of really bring in some mood into this image. Somewhere on a kind of that kind of point. And we're just going to grab the whites, the highlights. We're going to lift the highlights just ever so slightly. And this is the reason why when we went in and dealt with the highlights in the initial basics panel, we pulled those down to protect them. So we're still retaining that highlight information in the face. And what we're going to do is we're going to slightly crush the whites in the image. Now, we're going to go pretty subtle with this. I don't want to go mad. Somewhere in that kind of region is looking pretty good. So we flattened the image out now. We've got a little bit more character in it. So let's take a look at before and after. So you can see quite a considerable difference to the tonal uh, values in the image itself and also the color information. We've adjusted it and given it a slightly cooler look. So we finished with the tone curve. Now the next thing I'm going to do is jump up to the HSL section, make some basic tweaks. And once we've done that, I'll take a look and show you how I would then process the image beyond the preset. Now the HSL panel is where we can really fine tune and tweak and control the colors in this image. So we're going to leave the hue. I don't want to adjust any of the tones in the image. I don't want to shift them, but I do want to deal with the saturation and adjust some of the luminance in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the red channel in the saturation and we're going to give that a bit of a bump up to get some nice sort of warmth back into the areas that have been made a little bit green. Like I say, don't want to go crazy with this, but we're going to start making some tweaks in there. This is going to influence the woodwork that you can see on the right hand side and also some of the skin tones that have this sort of red and orange tints, uh, tints in them. So you're going to notice now when we start to adjust the orange slider, this is where you'll see the biggest difference on the skin tones in his face. So keep an eye on the face. And as we move that over, you can see that really does start to darken and bring in some warmth back into the skin tones and also into this wood in the window. So what we're going to do with this is take it mid 20s is pretty good. And we'll find to a lesser extent the yellow is going to do the same kind of thing. So if we start to bring in a little bit more yellow saturation probably around about that kind of point somewhere there you can see if we before and after it's subtle but the skin warms up the shadows warm up the actual light coming in from the window starts to warm up a little bit now we're going to do that a little bit more of this kind of thing so we're going to come down to the luminance on the red channel we're going to give that a little bit of a boost to bring some more to lighten the sort of red tones in the image ever so slightly, somewhere around that kind of point. Now the orange is where, like I say, this is going to affect the skin tones and the sort of lights coming in from the right hand side. So to do this, if we take a look at the luminous slider, you can see it gets darker to the left, lighter to the right. So we're going to bring in some additional darkness. So just basically bring in some more saturate or some more color, some more depth to that color. So we're going to grab the orange slider. We're going to bring this a fair way down, probably around mid 30 to 40, somewhere around there. Now you can see the difference in that is quite considerable. We brought some warmth back into the skin tones while still retaining that yellow tint in the shadow, sorry, the green tint in the shadows. Now finally, we're just going to grab the yellow and we're going to give that a little bit of a boost up just to lighten those yellow tones up. Somewhere around that kind of, around there looks pretty good. So you can see by making these adjustments, we just brought some warmth back into the warmer, the lighter areas, keeping that green coolness in the shadows, which is kind of where that sort of the darker images in the Lord of the Rings come in. If you look at those, they've got a kind of green tint to the shadows. This is where I would leave it. And this is pretty much where the preset gets you to. Now you can, and we will take a look at enhancing this a little bit more. But like I say, this is where the preset gets you. Anything beyond this now is kind of more specific to the image that you're working with. So what I'll tend to do when I'm working with a preset is I'll look at the image itself and see, right, what do I think this needs to have done to it to enhance it beyond that initial starting point? Because all presets are basically a starting point. You'll sometimes come across one that you'll click it, it'll have a perfect effect. But nine times out of ten, you're going to go in and tweak and adjust a little bit more. So this is kind of what I do with this. So I'm going to take a look at the luminance more than anything, because I want to see what I want to do to his face and the warm tones in, in the image. So... I would sort of generally tend to come in and you can see that 
The red doesn't have a massive effect on this, but it does make some slight alterations. But I would come in and tweak the orange a little bit more just to kind of flatten those down. Just to really get what I'm looking for to bring some warmth into it. So you can see if we grab the saturation, now we brought in some additional depth to the, the oranges. When we start to take the orange saturation up, you can see it starts to get a lot more evident. Now that's obviously way too far. But I'd probably bring that back a little bit, just make some adjustments to this, just to really enhance those sort of skin tones and the warmth in the image itself. The yellow, you can see, if we take that over to the right hand side, it starts to lighten these highlight areas up where the window is sort of illuminating the wood and the metal. So we can control that if we want to make that lighter, we can do that by dragging it over to the right hand side. But if you find that's kind of drawing your eye, you can easily do the opposite and sort of take that over to darken those areas down just to make sure that your focus is on the character as opposed to these elements that are coming in from the, the right hand side. Now if you want to accentuate the con sort of the green tones in the shadows and the highlights then obviously you can adjust the luminance and you'll make some slight tweaks to that and the same goes with the saturation. You'll bring some more green into it or some less green into it. These are all subtle tweaks kind of thing that you really can sort of decide how far you want to go. And I'm kind of happy with where we are there. So let's take a look at it before and after to see all the things that we've done to this and what we've ended up with from our starting point. So this is what we started off with. A great candidate to add some mood and some real character to the image. And this is where we are once we've made our alterations. So I think we've got a really good sort of cinematic look to this. We've got a real dark and moody. You kind of wonder what this particular person is thinking about while staring out of that window. Really does add some extra sort of dimension to it. And that's all there is to this video. So if you like the look of this and you'd like to grab the preset, the link is in the description below. So you can go over to our website, download that completely free of charge, and you can start working on your images to get it exactly the way this looks. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video or anything else we cover in the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. And if you'd like to support us through Patreon, the details are in the description below where you can go over and subscribe, become a member and support us on there. Anyway, until next time, take care.